BattleBots Face Offs is officially underway, and robots like Scorpius and Malice have entered the arena, but news and developments are still trickling out thanks to two recent interviews from BattleBots co-founder Greg Munson. Last video we posted brought you part number one of our BattleBots Face Offs preview. We discussed everything we knew about the event, plus a preview of all robots competing in groups one through four. But now we're back with an update on BattleBots Face Off news, previews on groups number 5, 6, 7, and 8, and to cap it all off, TCC's predictions for the largest BattleBot event of 2024, BattleBots Face Offs. Lots to discuss here, so let's jump right in here at the Combot Collective. Welcome to the Combot Collective. Hello and welcome back to the Combot Collective, bringing everything you want to know about the world of BattleBots, and we're here for the second half of our BattleBots Face-Offs preview. In our last video, which has been doing great by the way, thank you so much to any old and new viewers that decided to check it out, but in that video, yes, we broke down the round-robin format of BattleBots Face-Offs, what to expect from the unique competition, plus an update and preview on the first 16 robots we would see competing at Face-Offs from groups 1, 2, 3, and 4, from Mad Catter to Manta to Witch Doctor. But now, we're here to move on to groups 5, 6, 7, 8, seeing who we should appreciate from the likes of Tombstone and Minotaur. And then on top of that, we're going to be ending this video with a prediction on all 8 of our face-off groups, making a quick pick on exactly who we think will win each respective round robin. But first, before all of that, we have a couple of updates on BattleBots Face-Off news. Since part number one aired on our channel a little over a week ago, much thanks to a couple of Greg Munson interviews, one by the beloved behind the bots, and one from a good friend of mine in the robot combat world, the biggest Arizona Diamondbacks fan I know, Mr. Green Square. In these two interviews, we heard some overlap of developments, but overall, we learned this, and it's a bit unfortunate. BattleBots Face-Offs will not be airing next week, this month, next month, or anytime soon. Because from what we heard, and it does make sense because editing and post-production does take time, BattleBots Face-Offs will not be hitting the YouTube page until late 2024, potentially even early 2025. So it's going to be a few month wait for sure, but if you are impatient, you want to get your robot combat fixed right now, you don't care about the glitz or the glamour, you just want to see raw fights, you will be able to check them out as soon as this week or next week in their raw form exclusively on the BattleBot Supporter Portal on Facebook, which you pay $4.99 a month for. If you're interested in this chance to see the BattleBots face-off fights as early as possible, do check out the BattleBots Facebook page. Do check out the BattleBots social media page on Facebook. And speaking of production, another reason for this wait is that BattleBots is still trying to figure out the commentary situation. There's a chance that it could just be the live commentary provided by Bill Dwyer and Steve Judkins. But Greg also suggested the idea of the two teams not competing doing commentary for each respective battle. But in my opinion, that seems incredibly amateur. Hope they skip that idea. Really, the most promising idea that Greg brought up was the concept of getting Chris and Kenny in studio to call these fights in post. Something that would bring a lot of legitimacy to the episodes. But that likely would involve BattleBots picking up some more, potentially bigger, sponsors for this event on YouTube. Apparently, something BattleBots almost had before that controversial Las Vegas article leaking Destructathon's hiatus went public. Hopefully, the fights will be good and sponsors will come because the world needs more Chris, Kenny, and maybe even Farouk in their lives and we can get him as well. We're going to have to see what happens, but that's the news we have recently learned out of the way. We are now caught up on all BattleBots face-off developments, but now let's get to the meat of it. Moving on to previewing robots from groups 5 through 8. All of these robots aren't fighting anytime soon with all these machines' respective pools taking place, I don't know, around late October to November to December. So that means there's still plenty of time to get tickets to see these phenomenal veterans and newcomers, with one group including a former Giant Nut winner. Tickets for BattleBots face-offs will be in the description for this video below. But now, let's jump into our bot previews and soon enough our predictions, kicking off with the all-veteran group number 5. Yes, when it comes to BattleBots TV veterans, group number 5 is one of our most experienced pools yet, with all four of these robots getting prominent TV time during the recent World Championship 7, 
including the rookie of this bunch, the promising Terror Tops, who was easily the best exhibition robot at World Championship 7. And this prehistoric powerhouse will be joined by a very similar robot in Switchback, plus a couple of horizontal spinners in Bloodsport and Hijinx, making this quite the varied fifth group. We start this preview though with my personal favorite in this competition, and all the regular TCC viewers know why, representing Dallas-Fort Worth, the 817 and 214 from Rev Robotics, the one and only Switchback, who will hopefully perform much better than the Rangers and Cowboys have as of late. When we last saw the slick switch back on TV, it was at BattleBots World Championship 7 where it made the playoffs for the first time ever, only to fall to Malice in the first round via knockout, but it did have quite the impressive 3-1 regular season to make it that far to begin with. Since World Championship 7, Switchback has also made a couple of appearances at BattleBots Proving Grounds, taking a win and a loss against Rick Russ's Swamp Thing. This middling Proving Grounds appearance took place so Rev Robotics could test out a few new weapon motors and software changes internally, with some of these working out and some not, but that was for Proving Grounds. If you're looking for specific updates in terms of face-offs, the team have not shared anything publicly as of late, but Captain Greg Needell has recently said that weapon reliability is still the biggest problem and focus for this team on their road to World Championship 8. So you have to imagine that the arm will be the focus before and after this event for the Rev Robot. Hopefully we can see it pick up a win or two. But now for my favorite robot, we go to dear friend and part-time TCC co-host, Pori Nog's favorite robot, the ace of the always active BNS Robotics crew, Bloodsport. Bloodsport, much like Switchback, had an impressive regular season with wins over Gigabyte and Rotator, leading to another playoff appearance for it, but one which ended with heartbreak as Bloodsport 2 dropped out of the round of 32 following a disappointing loss against Lockjaw. Also, much like Rev Robotics, BNS Robotics 2 has been quite active at BattleBots Proving Grounds, with Bloodsport plus the team's newest robot, Fireball, who sits at 1-1 one one inside the Proving Grounds arena. But this isn't about the bird Fireball. This is about the veteran here. Bloodsport's Proving Ground trip took place last September in a pair of battles against the hometown jackpot, this weekend showed off a new look, all white Bloodsport with new electronics and new vulcanized wheels. And this Bloodsport would draw even with Jackpot after one win and one loss, both by knockout. Since then, Justin Marple and BNS Robotics have been fairly hush hush with their updates following the news of their face off's inclusion. The only info we have really been able to gather is that the team is looking to build another new Bloodsport. So at the least, we can expect this team to show up with multiple Bloodsport bodies, and we can also expect this team to be fine-tuned with a sharpened blade. BNS Robotics battles all over the country, from NHRL to BattleBots to TRC with their machines, and usually, with a group of four like this, you would maybe call the horizontal spinner the Dark Horse, but you can never count out Bloodsport with its pedigree. But like I mentioned, Bloodsport, not the only horizontal spinner in the mix here at group number five. We will also be seeing the return of Jill Herkenroder, Offbeat Robotics, and the big spinner hijinks, who, unlike Bloodsport and Switchback, have not been to a Proving Grounds event, so this will be Hijinx's first competition since World Championship 7. And also, unlike Switchback and Bloodsport, Hijinx failed to reach the playoffs of World Championship 7, breaking a two-year streak of making the top 32 that went back to the robot's debut. And since the championship, the team has taken some time away to breathe for robot combat, with Hijinx only making appearances as a display bot at various events. But don't think this means the team hasn't been working on updating Hijinx. The team clearly has been hands-on with the robot, as we saw with the team's recent video on the Scorpius YouTube. But just like the last two teams, info has been limited, with us only really knowing about the newer, more durable Hijinx wheels for face-offs, plus the change of their VESC controllers now going to Hobbywing controllers. Two changes which will hopefully give Hijinx longer battles inside the arena. Also, shared by Jen on that YouTube video were her thoughts on the event, saying that the team was more confident than ever with Hijinx for face-offs, and that this extended break following World Championship 7 has been a bit of a blessing in disguise for the team, as now they are much clearer, much more refreshed after two years away from the arena. But finally, we loop right back to the first robot we mentioned here, the US-UK machine Teratops, a lifter-spinner hybrid captained by Ben Burton who has taken the heavyweight scene by storm since his team's debut as an alternate squad at World Championship 7, defeating the likes of Slamo and even Mammoth. 
At that event, it debuted its signature move, the Teratops thing, where it lifted robots up by the front and struck their underbelly, a maneuver it also managed to pull off time and time again at RoboGames 2023 and 2024, the only events Teratops has competed in since World Championship 7. At the Bay Arena, it defeated the likes of Mondamus, LazyBot, Boyan, Original Sin, among others, while holding its own versus big dogs like Jackpot, Black Dragon, and even Manta. And this time in the arena has only made Ben Burton a better and better driver, and it has also allowed for numerous updates to take place on Teratops over the years as well, making this Titan Triceratops essentially a new robot from what we saw in 2022. The 2024 RoboGames and Faceoffs version of Teratops features a brand new, sleeker chassis with modified weapon forks, plus the addition of vulcanized rubber wheels, similar to what Bloodsport also has added for this competition. Outside of Champions, this will be the first time Teratops will share a competitive field with any of these robots, especially in such a direct sense like this. Might be the outsider, but it's definitely a proven robot not to mistake here in Group 5. Now, of course, just like in part one of our preview, we're going to be going over key battles and rematches to look out for here across the four pools we will be discussing in this video. Starting, of course, with this group number five pool, as all of the focus is on hijinks' potential redemption battles with Switchback and Bloodsport. Going back to that hijink Scorpius video, Jen Herc and Rotor had plenty to say about her thoughts on these rematches and what went down in the past, especially with Switchback who ripped Hijinx's undercutter clean off during the World Championship 7 regular season, and apparently the trash talk and banter have been at an all-time high between Rev and Offbeat Robotics since the BattleBots face-off announcement that these two would be facing off one another again. Should be a fun horizontal spinner on vertical spinner battle. The Hijinx will also be on the quest for revenge against one Bloodsport as well, who had battled all the way back during his debut year of 2020 during the Bounty Hunters Heat Semifinals. This was a wild horizontal spinner on horizontal spinner showdown, and according to Jen, a meeting which was a lot closer than what the casual fans and TV cameras saw, with Bloodsport only apparently a strike or two away from succumbing to hijinks when hijinks crumble instead. Will hijinks go two for two on its redemption tour? We're gonna have to see. Uphill battle, but time will tell. But now to group number six. And if the Manta led group number three featuring one top robot and three unproven underdogs was our guaranteed Mickey Mouse group, then this group six field featuring three most destructive award winners, a giant bolt winner, a giant nut winner, and maybe one of the most exciting TV newcomers of recent memory has to be viewed as our group of deaths for faceoffs. We have some insane spinners, both vertical and horizontal in this pool, and where some robots lack an insane power, they make up for it with potential sport-changing tech. And that's the kind of tech we have displayed on our rookie of the group, Orbitron. Now, a lot of the more casual fans have been calling doom and gloom for poor Orbitron, the counter-revolution-inspired dual vertical spinner. But just because you're not familiar with the Hacksmith's hellacious vert does not make it an automatic 0-3 snub. This robot is sturdy, it packs a punch. And that's not even the exciting part on this Canadian representative from the University of Waterloo. What's really thrilling is what's going on under the lid of Orbitron. We've seen artificial intelligence tried out on numerous robots from Chomp to Doomba, but never has a robot moved and operated like a true AI, something like we would see out of Robot Arena 2, like Orbitron has in its first few battles. Orbitron operates on a unique artificial intelligence system that uses internal cameras inside the robot to understand the complete depth of the arena, plus where its opponent may be at any given time, even having the ability to anticipate a robot's next movement with quick and precise action. We saw this robot and its AI system be tested last year at BattleBots Proving Grounds in an electric weekend versus Roundhouse, where Orbitron gave the horizontal spinner a run for its money, going 0 for 2 but impressing after a pair of electric fights. But it was a win for the team who very much impressed BattleBots and fans alike with this futuristic robot, but changes had to be made after the fact. Following Proving Grounds, the team addressed the issues with their controller, weapon spin-up, and most importantly, the AI system, which while impressive, was reportedly far from perfect still. And this led the team to making a brand new Orbitron, Orbitron 2024, the version which fought at Proving Ground earlier this year and likely the one we are going to be seeing at BattleBots face-offs. 
This new Orbitron was built to be much sturdier, more serviceable, and was highlighted by a brand new set of weapon blades, with one blade being a 17-pound blue asymmetric bar and the main front spinner being a much heavier 27-pound golden disc. And these changes, at least two battles in, have worked great. At that second Proving Ground weekend, it dominated this array, knocking out the subaquatic spinner in under two minutes twice over the weekend, with the artificial intelligence reportedly being much more prevalent this time around. This team has the entire sport excited both in terms of competition and innovation, but I cannot help but worry about the amount of moving parts this robot possesses. Even with the new version, we saw issues arise on the robot as close as three hours before it had the fight earlier this year, something the team will not be able to afford come a true three-day competition like face-offs. The team seems prepared though, they certainly have the funding and apparently will have the Orbitrons too, as the team will be bringing two Orbitrons to face-offs. We'll have to see if the smart bot will have the brains to outplay the sports elite, and perhaps the most similar to Orbitron of these three would be its fellow vert in the pool, the reboot era legend Hypershock, another robot which recently found itself in another playoff Sweet 16 at World Championship 7, only to be halted by eventual champion Sawblaze and powerhouse Riptide. But unlike World Championship 7, here Hypershock will be driven for the third time ever by the team's ace up their sleeve, Alex Bales, who of course won her first ever event driving Hypershock at Remar's All-Stars, an event we're hopefully finally going to get to see next month. Alex more recently appeared at Battle Boss Champions 2 where she led Hypershock to the heat final, getting herself to a 5 fight win streak before finally being halted by Ripperoni. More recently though, Alex and Hypershock made a surprise appearance at Proving Grounds last year after the team's newest robot, Vertigo, failed to get working in time for the weekend. Here, this non-showbot version of Hypershock showed it had not lost a beat after a year on the shelf, knocking out a very game magnitude two times over to end the year. The only update Hypershock brought to Proving Grounds that weekend was a slight change in its body geometry, with the stabilizing horns on the front of the robot now changed in a way that allows Hypershock to spin up the full weapon speed even when flipped over. Not much is known about Hypershock though going into face-offs, but we know big things are going down in South Florida. Plenty of work though for sure as finally, Team Hypershock have confirmed they will be bringing three Hypershocks to face-offs, one for each battle. One robot at face-offs that Hypershock has a bit of history with is the Undercutter Valkyrie, one of the stronger horizontal spinners of the Discovery era. It's also a robot that's kind of lost its way following a very complex 2022, but it looks like some of the old guard will be returning for face-offs, and the Valkyrie may be back on course soon enough. Last time we saw Valkyrie compete was at World Championship 7, but not with the usual team captain, Leanne Cushing, but with NHRL powerhouse Lucy Dew taking the helm as captain and driver for the robot instead. And with Lucy came a brand new team for Valkyrie, one which only retained a single member of their world championship roster. And despite the shakeup, Lucy's and despite the shakeup and what some people may say online, Lucy Dew's team did not do terribly. But they did leave some room to be desired with a three and four year that saw the Valkyrie team miss the playoffs. But guess what, Valkyrie diehards? With Lucy Dew sadly absent from this event with other commitments, we got Valkyrie owner Leanne Cushing returning as the Valkyrie captain. Leanne took a small hiatus away from the sport and has competed sporadically with some newer, smaller robots at competitions such as NHRL and RoboGames, but now she looks to put the questionable designs gang back together. According to, Green Square Pro According to Green Square Podcast, we know she's currently on the hunt for a new Valkyrie driver with the old driver, Frederick Moore, now working with Ripperoni. And in the meantime, the crew has been preparing for this event. But not much has been revealed outside of some key parts arriving in shipping, such as a new blade. Should be sturdy. Undeniably though, this group's marquee robot, and maybe this entire event's marquee robot, is the one and only 2016 Battle Bus Champion Tombstone. As after almost three years of build-up, Ray Billings is back to bring Tombstone, Battle Bus Face-Off's only giant nut winner, out of the longest hiatus of its career. A hiatus that spurred after a chain events starting after Ray Billings had injured his hand, leaving him out of commission to build or even drive robots for quite some time. But the team didn't want to bow out of robot combat just yet. The squad showed up to Remar's All-Stars a couple months later in 2022 with Justin Billings, Ray's son, driving Tombstone. But after Hypershock bullied Tombstone into a corner, leaving it knocked out and smoking within seconds, the team ultimately decided to set out a World Championship 7. 
But as of early 2023, Ray Billings has been back in the saddle, just not with Tombstone, but seemingly with everything else. We've seen Ray Billings build a new heavyweight, a vertical spinner named Stink Eye, who after two Robo Games events has been quite solid. We've seen Ray compete at NHRL and Robocore with his new 30 pounder disinformation, an old school drum bot that has managed to destroy some very new school designs. And we've even seen Ray at Balbot's Proving Grounds driving one half of a multi bot with Martin Mason. But believe it or not, despite all this, Ray will not be driving Tombstone at face offs. It will be, again, Justin Billings. This move may be controversial to some, but Ray seems confident that Justin has improved as a driver over these last two years. A fair observation after his recent middleweight championship driving Mortician at Robo Games this year. But now talking about upgrades, I can speak for them some here, but not really. I would definitely suggest checking out Ray Billings' three recent BattleBots face-off videos. Really solid pieces that explain all the new changes on Tombstone from the man itself. But we got cliff notes here for y'all. Upgrades for Tombstone have really been a multi-year process. Earlier last year, the team modified Tombstone's frame and armor to make it more robust against bigger impacts. But more recently, the team has done internal work on the robot. And it would seem everything key under the lid has been changed from the drive motors to the main weapon motor, an E-Tech R motor which originally had problems with the shell encasing the motor cracking mid-fight. This has potentially been fixed with a new sturdier mounting featuring forged aluminium bolted directly into the steel magnet ring of the motor. Though maybe the longest term update here would be the new battery boxes. Now custom 3D printed to fit Tombstone's batteries like a glove. Giving it much better protection from smoke and lipo fires. Which of course been a little bit of a kryptonite for Tombstone as of its most recent events. Tombstone and Hardcore Robotics is definitely going to sell out the venue when they're all around. And there will definitely be enough Tombstone to go around, as Ray has already promised multiple Tombstones to be brought for face-offs, and they may need them with this crazy pool. And talking about this pool as a whole, just like with a couple of these prior groups, our key matches and rematches seemingly revolve around one key robot here, this time Hypershock. And what stands out to me is a rematch for a fight we just brought up, a fight we funnily enough have yet to see in full, the Hypershock vs. Tombstone Showdown. We mentioned this battle was one-sided, not characteristic for Tombstone, but this was Justin Billings' second fight ever with Tombstone. Two years later, after a handful of fights with Mortician, it'll be interesting to see what these two BattleBots OGs with new drivers will do to come out on top. The other Hypershock showdown will be part three of a very one-sided trilogy between it and fellow East Coast neighbor Valkyrie. These two robots first met during opening night of the 2019 season, where Hypershock embarrassed Valkyrie, almost sending it out of the arena within seconds after an amazing box rush. Two years later, the pair would meet again in the Champions 1 Heat semifinals, but again, Hypershock rocked Valkyrie once more, becoming the first robot to de-weapon Valkyrie's undercutter in what was another knockout loss for questionable designs. Now they run it back once again, this time against an Alex Bales-driven Hypershock. But now let's move on to group number seven, a very interesting one as this group was added very recently to the competition. In fact, almost an entire month after every single other group was shared to the public. And thank more for this group though, as it has turned our awkward seven group 28 robot field into a perfect 32 machine pool. And if you thought group number five had veterans galore, all four of group number seven's robots have all been a part of at least two world championships including the most recent World Championship 7, with all these robots taking their own fascinating path moving towards this December face-off session. And this time we start with the ace of the group, a Brazilian murder machine ready to test itself against some very promising control robots, our third and final international entrant in this tournament, and the only robot of our 32 to come from outside of North America, the 2018 BattleBots finalist and World Championship 7 one seed, Minotaur. It's been a hell of a time for the always busy Riobots camp following World Championship 7, as after Minotaur's thrilling loss to Sawblaze in the playoffs, the team went right back to their home country and continued its always dominant ways, with success at Robocore in Brazil, IIT Tech Fest in India, and of course NHRL here in the States, making the NHRL Championship Final in both 2022 and 2023. But what about the heavyweight? While its alter ego has been conspicuously absent from RoboGames, we did see the Minotaur come out of its labyrinth after a year and a half slumber last April with Minotaur partaking in four fights during Destructathon All-Star Week, 
even managing to take home the giant washer for being the most destructive robot in the process. This award-winning week saw Minotaur challenging Travis T, Lucky, and Claw Viper twice, with Minotaur winning once versus each. But did anything change in the Brazilian Bull from the last time we saw it on TV? Not really, to be honest. Changes have likely been made under the hood, but the only thing the public is aware of right now is that Minotaur now features sturdier armor up top and down below, certainly a direct response to that aforementioned Saw Blaze fight. Riobots are now in the midst of a very busy heavyweight fall, with not only Minotaur competing in face-offs, but the team also has a new robot, Scrap, scheduled for Battle of Robots later this year. Interesting to see, can Riobots go two for two? They've been so good so far. But now we shift over to that aforementioned robot, which not only challenged Minotaur over All-Star Week, but managed to even defeat it in one of its two battles versus the Riobots drum. From Team Bad Ideas, a team generally familiar with Riobots come any weight class or event. It's the best control bot in the sport today, Claw Viper, driven by Kevin Mulcheski, maybe the best driver in our sport today? Team Bad Ideas, much like Riobots, was very quiet in the 250-pound class before All-Star Week with the team focusing on smaller events such as NRL and NHRL. But when it was time to return, Claw Viper did not lose a beat as it went 2-1 over the week with the aforementioned knockout loss to Minotaur plus a pair of judges' decision wins over Minotaur and Banshee and a pair of dominating control performances. But what has changed on Claw Viper this year? Well, the team is infamous for being one of the most quiet crews on social media, but we were able to pick up a couple of ticks from their interviews at Proving Ground during All-Star Week. Here, the team stated Claw Viper has had some internal work done, allowing for an uptick in reliability, something the bad ideas really harped on following their Hypershock loss at Champions 2. One of these shifts under the lid would be a change in speed controller for Claw Viper's all-important drive motors, perhaps making the sport's fastest robot even sharper in its mobility. Externally, though, Claw Viper is now fitted with sturdier front steel forks, something for the strong drums and vertical spinners out there, plus... A shorter top claw, which in theory would leave Claw Viper without such a blatant target up top. Now, Kevin Molcheski is an elite control bot driver in the sport today, but before there was Kevin, there was Gary Jinn, one of the sport's most beloved drivers, and a surprise to see here at BattleBots Faceoffs, as Gary usually only partakes in heavyweight majors. Trends be damned, though, Gary Jinn has brought along free shipping with elements of control and damage on the ready. Free shipping will be entering its first event since its phenomenal top 8 performance at BattleBots Champions 2. But just because free shipping has laid dormant since 2022 does not mean Gary Jin has. As over the last two years, Gary has been driving free shipping's older sibling, Original Sin. The most successful heavyweight in robot combat today at a pair of RoboGames events. After five years away, Original Sin returned to RoboGames 2023, still the defending champion and a robot that many... Myself included, thought could still win the Ruby Games gold medal, but this sport evolves quick. And that 2018 version of Original Sin was not able to keep up with the modern crop of robots, especially against BattleBots names such as Malice, and this left Original Sin with a 2-2 two two year, its worst finish at Ruby Games in over a decade. But unperturbed, Gary Jin would return to Ruby Games this year with Original Sin yet again, and did manage to have a much better run making it to the Elite 8, but once more succumbing to the new crop of robots, eventually getting eliminated by Manta in a passing of the torch moment. That brings us to today. Free shipping may have been collecting dust, but Gary Jinn has certainly kept himself warmed up and ready for more action come face-off. But in old-school Gary Jinn fashion, no news or updates have dropped on free shipping since the recent news of Group Number 7, but you can expect good vibes, life-size cardboard cutouts, and slushies in December from Gary Jinn. We can't wait. Finally, an interesting name here for me is Big Dill, the Green Machine Captain by Emmanuel Carrillo, the only driver in this pool to not have any experience inside a heavyweight arena this year since BattleBots World Championship 7. At that event, Big Dill was a 1-3 finish, but certainly no slouch. Instead, I've said it before on TCC that if certain fights went a certain way, whether it be ending earlier or different moments where Big Dill would have lasted longer, we would have seen a Big Dill run that would have easily put it into the playoffs but that's robot combat for you it's very fickle the powerful pickle was originally in the world championship sevens alternate pool but got accepted into the group with the dropout of doom so despite the record it really turned lemons into pickle juice given all the positive attention the robot had gotten after the great fights it delivered 
And on top of that, the robot has gotten much better with every single appearance we've seen from it over three BattleBot seasons. But come face-offs, we know absolutely nothing about her or what the team has been up to. All the team's social media pages go back to 2023. Some even go back to 2022. But like I said, this is a recent addition to the event. Not as much time for things to be hyped up for Team Food Fight. I'm sure Emmanuel Carrillo has not been sitting silent. Plenty of small bots events on the West Coast from NRL to Smash Bots. Areas where he got his career going to begin with and areas where he's likely been sharpening his driving blade. So get ready for more great TV from Big Dill in this very game, Group Number 7. Now, not only are rematches key here in Group Number 7, but they are plentiful with all four of these robots having at least three televised seasons under their belt. But the one scheduled rematch we've brought up the most thus far would be Claw Viper vs. Minotaur. An all-power vs. all-finesse showdown, which, like we mentioned, first took place back in April, with Minotaur first picking up a knockout win and Claw Viper then picking up a judge's decision win. But only one of these two robots can take the rubber match here. But forget recent history. The planned meeting with the most history out of maybe all of our face-off groups would be Minotaur vs. Free Shipping, these two robots, of course, met during World Championship 7, a battle which Minotaur won by knockout, but these two teams go way back further than even the BattleBots reboot. These two squads have been fighting heavyweights against one another since 2009. The history of Riobots and Team Special Delivery is a long one, one we've covered before, but one that's covered best by YouTuber Dysphoros, who did an amazing video covering the rivalry. We'll have that in the description below. A good watch after this one. And another free matching rematch to watch out for would be its rematch against Big Dill, another robot it faced during the World Championship 7 season where free shipping became the only robot to lose to Big Dill during the season, as Big Dill managed to not only upset free shipping, but knock it out too, maybe revenge on the mind for Gary Jen? That though finally brings us to Claw Viper vs Big Dill, a match which has never happened inside the arena competitively. The pair did have a practice scrimmage at Robot Ruckus 2021, but now they're set to fight for real this December, a pair of robots under the Western Allied Robotics umbrella, making this a little bit of an inner faction showdown of sorts. Finally, we have group number eight, a group that has also been claimed to be the Mickey Mouse group of face-offs by many, and I understand it, because at first glance you see the Deadly Cobalt, and then you see Slammo, who has had some rough televised seasons as of late. And then you see two rookie robots you may have never ever heard of or seen before, including one that a lot of people are assuming is a walking robot? But I have some hope for this group, and I think you should too, given the improvements that we've seen on Slammo and what we know about Vertigo. And no, guys, Vertigo is not a walking robot. It's actually a flipper. And it was one of the most hyped up and built up robots during the entire BattleBots Proving Grounds 2023 cycle, but it did end up having to pull out of its planned December matchup against Magnitude, for it was not ready for combat just yet. It would instead be replaced by Vertigo's teammate robot, the one and only Hypershock. That's right, Vertigo belongs to Team Hypershock, making it the team's new B robot and making Team Hypershock the only team running split squads at BattleBots faceoffs. Hypershock's original driver, the 2016 BattleBots Driver of the Year, Will Bales, will be taking over Vertigo, as Alex, of course, is driving Hypershock. And Will is going to be debuting Vertigo at this event officially, joining Calypso as one of only two robots that are making their official robot combat debut here at Faceoffs. Let's go back to the start, though. After months of huge hype and buildup in 2023, the team finally revealed to all of us that Vertigo would be a four-wheel drive flipper robot, which will be taking a lot of inspiration from the GOAT, Bronco, along with some classic UK robots such as St. Agro and Wheelie Big Cheese, as this flipper at the front is not your usual flipper, but a double flipper which fires two flippers in opposite directions at the same time to not only deliver a little bit of extra pop, but more importantly, allow Vertigo to be unaffected when it's flipped upside down, hence the name. Vertigo is set to feature similar drive power to Hypershock, and in fact will be a bit of a test bot for a newer, lighter drive system the team has created, one that if successful will be in Hypershock as well for future events. Whale Bells is certainly excited about the proposition of driving this robot, as now not only does he not have to worry about being flipped over, but he also now has to no longer worry about fighting gyroscopic forces. And that brings us to another flipper, to some definition at least, in Warthog. Now listen y'all, I've always defended the Abwalden Overlords and Triple Crowns of this game and I always will. 
This sport is as much about concept and innovation as it is about finesse and power. But I think if you hand a lot of veteran BattleBots fans a face-off bracket, this unique robot would probably be penciled in at 0-3 more than just about any of its other 31 competitors. Warthog comes to us from Wisconsin's Chris Hataja, an experienced roboteer which has played the role of pit crew for three different BattleBots including Jackpot. And like I mentioned, Warthog is a unique take on the flipper concept as Vertigo may be able to use its flip to power its full body, but Warthog is the true definition of a full body flipper. This strange robot has a large barrel shaped back end which holds the robot's internal electronics, but most importantly houses a large internal drum which gathers kinetic force, which allows Warthog, similar to Warrior Clan, to release that stored power, throwing its entire body upwards to flip its opponent. And to help with these flips, up front are a pair of UHMW and aluminium tusks, and then behind those tusks are a set of Omni wheels, yes, Omni wheels, at the side of Warthog at some fascinating angles. This robot made its debut last October at BattleBots Proving Ground, where it faced the legendary Conquering Clown in what ended up being an underwhelming weekend for both robots, especially Warthog, who went 0-2 after issues with VESCs and flipper control. The team then moved into 2024 with this year's Roby Games, but again, Warthog would struggle here, going 0-2 once again after a knockout loss against Original Sin and an awkward judge's decision loss to Echo 3.0. Lots of weird fights so far, but we can assume the team has done work to improve how Warthog fights and flips over the summer, and the greater wacky designs do, the more the sport evolves, so I'm certainly hoping for a shocking run from Warthog. And now for our final pair of veteran robots to discuss, two robots which have one thing in common. Both were originally built in the UK, but now reside in the United States full time. Only one of these two robots though still represents the Union Jack, and that's who we'll discuss first, the lovable Slamo, made by legendary roboteer and newfound Texan Craig Danby. After Slamo's top 32 finish in 2020, Team Danby has been trying to chase that success year after year with an ever-evolving version of the suplex machine, usually to disappointing results, as we saw in World Championship 6 and especially World Championship 7, where poor Slamo was left off the main field altogether. But if there's one robot in our face-off field which has gone through as much trial and error as Group Number 4's Doom, it's the one and only Slamo, who has had a whopping 8 fights at BattleBots Proving Grounds over the last year, putting up a winning record in the process. In its first appearance after World Championship 7, it had its first Proving Grounds outing, a 2-0 weekend where it defeated Overkill and Doom, albeit with not the most impressive weapon or drive power. Some of them returned in October and challenged Scorpius to a pair of fights with plenty of drive and control, but no weapon arm at all, leading to two judges' decision losses. Slamo then engaged in Team Danby's Civil War that December, battling its UK sibling Apex, coming on top in both battles with a working lifter and drive, though not against the scariest of challenges, we gotta admit. And then finally, earlier this year, Slamo put together another 2-0 weekend, defeating the retro Maximum Paralysis, despite the lifter only working in one of two fights. So despite the record, things aren't exactly consistent for the 2020 playoff member yet, Drive seems incredibly solid, dare I say reliable now, but the lifter remains a question mark. It is undeniably a better Slamo though. Over these Proving Ground weekends, we've seen the robot adapt a much more compact design, grippier tires, stronger batteries, new hard ox forks, a less complex lifting system, and even a slick black and pink livery to pay homage to G-Force Robotics, Craig Danby's FRC team. Craig seems about as confident as ever with Slamo given his recent streak. And with a whopping five Slamos reportedly built last year, I am sure the team will have plenty of spares on deck. Finally, one more robot to cover. And you know, for years here in the United States, Tombstone was looked at as the end-all be-all for robotic destruction here in North America. But across the pond, the standard bearer for destruction over the last 60 years was the one and only 2018 This Is Fighting Robots winner, Cobalt. But as a face-offs, this stands the case no longer. Obviously, Cobalt has been property of Robotic Death Company for over a year now, but I have not been able to let go of this robot's UK representation here at the Combot Collective. But now that Dave Moulds and Sam Smith, the original builders, have seemingly bowed out full-time now, we can no longer deny it anymore. This robot is solely representing the United States. In fact, it may have a stronger case to be a representative of Canada now. The last time we saw Cobalt at Champions 2, 
John Mladenic, a driver not experienced with vertical spinners, drove the robot for the very first time. And while he did reach the heat final, Jean left a lot to be desired with his performance. So that brings us to the Canadian phenom Matt Olson, who as we mentioned in part one of our face-off preview, after being so influential to bringing his home nation robot Lucky back to prominence, he has now been hired to go stateside and drive one of the most destructive machines in the world with Cobalt. This will be Cobalt's fourth driver in three years, going from Matt Maxim in World Championship 6 to David Moles in World Championship 7 to John Mladenic in Champions 2, now to Matt Olsen for face-offs. And we've seen how aggressive Matt can be with Lucky. Imagine now what he can do with Cobalt once he's adjusted, and that might just be my worry for Cobalt and Matt Olsen. There's a couple key hurdles for Matt to adjust to, such as getting used to fighting gyroscopic forces. Cobalt doesn't exactly leave the biggest footprint, but it does boast one of the sport's heavier weapons, and that's caused Cobalt problems in the past. And that's caused Cobalt problems in the past, even with experienced drivers such as Molds and Maxim. This change of drivers, though, is the only change we know of for Cobalt going into face-offs. As unlike other robots, since this robot was originally built by another team, I cannot imagine much has changed under the robot itself. We got a UK built robot on a USA team with a Canadian driver. It's a fascinating sight indeed, and it's certainly going to be a scary sight. Finally, with group number eight, kind of slim pickings for key fights within this pool of robots here. Cobalt is obviously the big name, but has no history with BattleBots, but has no history within BattleBots with either of these teams. But one meeting with a little bit of past sauce would be the flip around controller showdown of Vertigo versus Slamo which will be the second ever meeting inside the arena between Craig Danby and Will Bales. The first time these two met was in round one of the BattleBots World Championship 6 season, where these machines kicked off episode two in a one-sided battle where Hypershock seriously took it to the new look Slamo. But these are new robots here, new Slamo, new Vertigo, and Danby has no spinner to worry about this time. Perhaps a chance for Slamo to really stick its forks in there and show Will Bales how a control robot works. But there we go, guys. 16 robots up and down here in the second half of our BattleBots previews. We have now looked over all 32 robots across the eight groups covered from our big names like Tombstone, Witch Doctor, and Minotaur to our new names such as Warthog, Magnitude, and Calypso. We've seen what every team's been up to since World Championship 7 now, and we've seen what various robots have changed internally and externally so far. So now, briskly, let's close out this BattleBots face-off preview by going from group number one to group number eight, making our TCC predictions here, guessing which eight robots will leave with giant washers and become face-off group champions. And we start where this whole preview started with group number one, featuring the all-stars Scorpius and Mad Catter, plus new undercutters from old teams with Roundhouse in the debuting Calypso. Roundhouse had some great reliability and power from what we've seen out of it so far, and it may get a shock victory over Mad Catter or Scorpius, perhaps even both, but I'd be shocked. Scorpius has had some setbacks, and there were a lot of question marks for Mad Catter, and especially the debuting Calypso, but assuming Mad Catter's elite driver Calvin Eva is present, I'm predicting a Mad Catter group victory at 3-1, with Roundhouse coming in second at 2-1. Group 2 is just as tight, if not tighter than group number 1, but the winner will likely be decided by one match in this pool, the soon-to-be rubber match between Jackpot and Malice. While Disarray and Lucky certainly have a shot to win this group, with Disarray's recent losing streak and Lucky losing its top-tier driver this year, I have trouble putting my chips on the table for those two robots. Definitely leaning towards Jackpot and Malice here, but for me, I think Bunny should rethink her plans of going all-weapon versus Jackpot and bring out the Bunny Ear wedges for the fight against Jeff Waters. In my opinion, off offense is not the way to go versus Jackpot, but Bunny is a roboteer of her word, so with that, I'm going to have to lean towards Jackpot, hopefully going 3-0, having quite the run in its hometown. Moving to the one side of group number three, obviously something here has to go incredibly wrong for Manta to lose this group, so go ahead and mark the Robot Games champion as 3-0 with three knockouts, but someone will have to go 2-1 or at the very least play second here, but who? We have a tricky, unpredictable trio, all robots with varying mobility issues, so I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what Rusty can do to Travis T or Hellfire. So that brings me to our two undercutters here, and while it's tricky, I'm just going to have to give the edge barely to Hellfire, who is slightly sturdier, I believe, but I can't say I'm confident on this guess. 
Now to group number four, the last pool we covered in part one, featuring two Colorado robots, a legend, and an underdog. The Wacky Vert Taco Tuesday is a concept first robot, but it may shock us all, pull out all the stops, and upset Witch Doctor or Magnitude, but I would be shocked if Taco Tuesday managed to upset both. I'm 95% certain this group is going to come down to a meeting between Florida and Colorado's top vertical spinners, Witch Doctor and Magnitude, and I think despite the recent activity by Team Wazio and Magnitude, experience will trump raw power as I believe we're going to see Team Witch Doctor persevere through three fights over three days much better than Team Wazio and Magnitude will, providing them the long-term edge to go 3-0 or at least 2-1 with the tiebreaker advantage. But now to robots we discussed at the top of this video. Group 5 of course brings us the well-balanced group with two wide horizontal spinners and two control-based verts. And historically this looks like a group that Bloodsport, maybe even Switchback could do well in. But I think we need to watch out for Teratops. The World Championship 8 happens. This robot will be looked at as an immediate championship contender. And I believe it could easily shock any of these three more experienced robots. Teratop should be able to outcounter hijinks of Bloodsport, something I don't think Switchback will be as successful with. But man, I don't know. Ultimately, the triangle of power will be between Bloodsport, Switchback, and Teratops. A lot will depend on who fights who first, who takes damage early. But I'll go on a limb here and pick Teratops to just barely take this group. The group 6 pool death may be terrifying, but realistically, I see only one robot coming out on top here, and that is the undeniable Hypershock especially now that Alex Bales is permanently behind the sticks of it. When we look at the big picture, we have a very promising Orbitron, but an Orbitron still in its teething stages. We have Valkyrie, a robot which has hypershockophobia, that's essentially working its third team in three seasons. And then we have Tombstone, a robot that has been away for over two years, and a robot which has had trouble in the past, keeping up with the modern era of the sport. Every fight here will be electric, but I cannot help but feel this is the Bales family pool to lose. With group number 7, Minotaur obviously stands out as the people's favorite here, but the remaining three robots are no slouches either. Claw Viper, of course, owns a victory over Minotaur, and free shipping and big deal hold reputations of never dying during fights. I think just like with group number 2, this one will be decided by the big rubber match, our Claw, versus, our Claw Viper versus Minotaur matchup. These two teams have been by far the most active of the bunch here, and having a proper judging panel with the BattleBots damage-oriented rule set should help Minotaur avoid losing another Judge's Call versus Claw Viper. I predict Minotaur to just barely get a 3-0 week after a split judge decision win over the Washington Control Robot. And finally, the group we just discussed, group number 8, and I may have sung the praises for Vertigo and Slamo being potential threats in this December group, but in the end of the day, barring another freak incident similar to what we saw with Cobalt vs. Duck in 2019, I really don't see how any of these non-kinetic robots, working or not, can do anything to such a fine-tuned robot like Cobalt. Just like Manta, I'm giving this absolute killer an easy 3-0 with 3 knockouts. Also going to predict whoever works better between Slamo and Vertigo to take second place here. So there we go, guys. It's officially done. We have done the face-offs news. You guys know what's going on with this event. We know when it's going to be on TV. Sadly, not anytime soon. But if you want the raw footage, it's on Facebook. We've looked at all 32 robots. We have some amazing robots in this field, of course. The big, big names. Crazy new names. I mean, just thinking about Orbitron, Roundhouse, Manta, and Magnitude alone. It's going to be awesome. we got some really innovative designs like Warthog, like Travis T, like Orbitron again. And we've even made our predictions, our eight group winner predictions. If you really want to pull a robot that's going to win it all, you know, you have to look at your Witch Doctors, your Hypershocks, your Mantas, your super, super solid robots that are super meta with a great pedigree, especially when we don't have, you know, the counters to the vertical spinner, like the Hammer Saw is really present outside of Scorpius, who has been eh, kind of iffy lately. I don't know, though. We've covered it all. News out of the way, 32 robot previews are out of the way, the predictions are out of the way, take those to Vegas. That's going to wrap it up here at the Combot Collective. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want more Combot Collective, we have an Instagram page, we have a Facebook page, we have a Discord. It's a good time, but that's all we got to cover here at BattleBots Face Off News. I think this one's longer than the last one because of the predictions, so we're not going to take too much longer. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us during these two face-off videos. We got more UK and Russia robot combat to discuss next, more NHRL live streams. You know how it goes here at TCC. 
I am your host, as always, Drawing TXTG, and we will see y'all next time for more Robot Combat News. This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest hard ram, and this Lord.